Hey everyone. I'm just, I wanted you to be able to see the rain and I'm wearing my, so you can actually hear me. Uh, so please let me know if the sound is good. Yes, David the Good. The exact same one? Okay. I couldn't see it that closely, so I wasn't sure. Anyway, I um, I think I need a little more light on my face. Uh, let me work on that. Everyone, wish everyone a, a hello. Uh, what is today? June 2nd. I'll be right back. Thank you. Can't really do much more than that, so we'll see. You know, the computer just does what it does. It's not like a camera where you can make corrections, adjust the exposure. I don't even know if you can see the rain, but you can hear it coming down the gutter, that's for sure. I'm just giving you a view of the front yard and Someone asked me, what am I going to do for Christmas? Because I've had my Christmas lights on my trees all year. I've got four major maple trees out front. And they've been wrapped in lights since December. And one of them went out. That one over there. Oh, you can't see it from there. It's right there. That tree. The lights went out on that tree. And just for orientation, my garden is there. Well, I wonder if you're seeing this backwards though. You never know about the laptop camera. Anyway, this is the front of the house facing out. And if you're facing out, the garden is on the left and the cistern is on the right. And the road is down straight down below. So it has been raining. Sherry, am I saying your name right? Rainy there too. and. You're in Kentucky, right? I think I got that right. <laughs> Connie, are you saying this looks bright? Because to me, it looks really dark. Okay, Allison, I'm going to take you guys, you ladies, uh, name for, uh, word for it. I am set up on my little iron chairs that I had on my front porch, my cozy corner in my California garden. This little table is so wobbly. And the only reason I'm able to be out here is because of this. <laughs> I, I lit a pure beeswax candle and I put some citronella and uh, rosemary uh, essential oil drops in there, hoping that it would keep the mosquitoes away. I've ordered a bunch of zappers, which weren't cheap. Oh my gosh, they're expensive. And I know you can get them cheaper, but for whatever reason, I ordered these and hopefully they had good reviews and hopefully uh, that's going to help my make my ability to be on the porch bearable. I am Drinking out of one of my late bloomer homestead mugs. I just have a few more of these. Each one of these is custom. You see how she put this interesting little mark around this one. Maybe even that's just something that happens in the firing process. I don't know. But each one is custom. Someone was um, complaining about paying $40 for a mug. And I just wanted to explain that. I had these mugs custom made. They're rare. 
because there's only maybe 40 in existence, 50 tops. And the homestead mug, she's only made a handful since I've been here. So I wanted to let you know, if you're still thinking of getting one, I have three late bloomer gardener mugs. She technically, she has them and one homestead mug. So there are four mugs left. If anybody wants one, uh, you need to send a, if, if you're in the U S because shipping is $10. So out of that $40, because I don't want you to think that, oh my gosh, that's so expensive for a mug. Yes. You can buy a mug that's made in China by slave labor, <laughs> shipped on a cargo boat over here and um, sold on sale for $5 plus tax and shipping and the tax, depending on where you are located. Um, and maybe even, yeah, the shipping. So uh, you wind up paying maybe $15 for something like that. Whereas this, these are, one of a kind because they're custom made one by one. I mean, like for example, she made six the last time, one broke in the kiln, these things happen. And so she had already made that mug. So she's just out that money. So $5 of that 40 goes to my channel. $10 goes to the post office. Let's see, that leaves 25 for materials and her labor, and she drives it to the post office. I don't do any of that. So um, if you're interested, there are four more mugs left, and you just need to go to my PayPal. If um, Haffy or um, Patricia can post the link for my PayPal, that would be great. And you have to send to a friend, or PayPal will take out half of that $5 and keep it. So. I would really appreciate that. Now, I just, uh, let's see, we only have 39 people, but hopefully people will see this later. While I'm thinking of it, our, um, <laughs> one of our moderators, uh, who is my own personal meteorologist, who alerts me about weather, also sent me a weather um, radio, alarm radio. Uh, Jack, it's his birthday today. And I'm guessing he's 19. Yeah, I'm thinking he's probably, because he graduated, he had a virtual graduation last year from high school. So I think it was virtual. I can't remember. It was, it was sort of during the lockdown thing. So I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, it's his birthday today. And I'm going to sing a quick happy birthday. And if you guys could join me and wish Jack a happy birthday, I'm sure He's with his family right now. He let me know he wouldn't be joining until maybe the very end, but I don't want to forget. <laughs> so I want to just sing it now because I told him I would. So here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jack. Happy birthday to you and many more. So happy birthday, Jack. I hope it's great. Uh, say hello to your family and thanks so much for being such a great friend. And anyone else who has a birthday today, please consider that extended to you as well. Uh, let's see, Gail, are you asking me? It is um, 5.06 and uh, I'm in Tennessee in central time. Good evening, Jennifer, 36 degrees, 86 degrees. I need, to, I need to make the uh, mm, the letters bigger. Hold on. There we go. Ah, uh, I, I know I'm backlit, but can you see my face, Connie? Actually, that is not sun. It's just light. There is no sun. That's a big white cloud that puts out a lot of light. Let me turn it this way. You've already seen that angle anyway. So maybe we can slide around, see if this is better. No, I don't think that's better. We can keep going. Oh, this is fun. It's just, I wanted you to, I didn't want you to look in the house. I just wanted you, ooh, 
That's bright. Yeah, see, now you can't see the yard. Oh, well, you got to see it. I know you can see my face better now. Okay, let's see. Philly is here. Good evening. Are you in Philadelphia? And what's your name? Hi, Daryl. Hi, Verge. Uh, let's see. Allison, Gail, Marianne is here from Massachusetts. Kylie Kai. Uh, Nana is in the house. She's in England. Jack is getting a lot of birthday messages. Uh, thank you. Happy has posted my PayPal link. That's how you pay for the mug if you want one. It would be great to go ahead and sell those four. And I, I may not ask her to make any more. It's, it's a lot of work for $5. So. Hmm. What I haven't done lately, Happy, if you wouldn't mind, is posting the T-shirt link. This is my Dirt Person T-shirt. I want to talk about rain, what we're going to do about that. First, I wanted to Tracy Point. Uh, I don't know if Tracy Garns is here. She posted a link for me about how to like always recognize poison ivy. And I watched that. That was very helpful. And I really appreciate all the great comments and suggestions that everybody sends to me. Thank you. Thank you. Yvonne is here. 88 degrees. Brandon. Very nice name, Brandon. Mm. Well, Marianne, I, um, I'm, it's not a specialty or anything. I have a bunch of dried herbs in there. And I have a little basket. And when I just feel like something, I make a cup of tea. I don't have anything packaged or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Tommy and Kathy are here from Bossier City, Louisiana. Oh, yes, that would be a good rainy day activity, canning and preserving, if there was something to can and preserve. Oh, I meant to bring them out here. Uh, post, I uh, harvested, Justin and I, harvested a handful of snow peas today. They were actually a little long in the tooth, if you know what I mean. They were just a few plants at the end of that row that were snow peas instead of the snap peas. And they were so short and from a distance, I couldn't even see, see them. And he said, have you been in the uh, enclosure lately? I said, no. He said, well, you've got peas down there. So we went down and we got a handful of peas before he left. I offered them to him if he might want to make um, stir fry tonight, but he had plans. He already had his dinner planned. <laughs> I don't know if Lyndon will walk back there. I don't think she'll know to do that. Martin G is here from San Antonio, Texas. Okay, great. I, uh, so much rain. Uh, I don't even know what to think. Let's see. Uh, Let's see. Yes, that's a good point. 61 of you are here. If you're very, very new, if you're new, recently new to my channel, I know I got a lot of new visitors to my channel because of what happened here and the uh, amazing response I've had to that video. So if you're new to my channel, I hope you subscribe and I know you'll find something to enjoy because I have been doing this for eight, over eight and a half years. And I've covered so many subjects. I've interviewed so many people. I've filmed so many gardens. And all of that is on my channel. So although my channel now is about trying to set up this homestead and get it operational, I have been doing all kinds of gardening videos, uh, urban gardening videos primarily. But I have a series uh, playlist on world gardens. I have a big playlist 
of Phoenix Gardens because Jack uh, was my personal chauffeur and planner coordinator and I would fly into Phoenix she would pick me up and we would just go from one garden to the to the next and we did that three or four times so there there must be at least 10 gardens on there Oh fantastic Nana fantastic I bet you can get that too in Scotland I would love to go to Scotland again I know we had such a good time. I have such a great time when I visit Jack. Oh my gosh. Anyway, the 61 of you that are tuned in, thank you so much for joining, especially if you're new to the channel. What I'm trying to do, I've, I'm in my sixth month, started a six month um, here at this new Tennessee place. Uh, been a lot of challenges huge adjustment for me. I was in Southern California year round gardening, temperate climate for, well, I was there for 32 years, gardening for eight. And then to come back to Tennessee, which is my home state, which is why I wound up here. One reason, um, getting used to the humidity and uh, you know, when you have a big place like this with forest all around, there's just, there's so much poison ivy and I'm very allergic. And here's Justin out today, just like pulling it out with his hands. And I'm just like, don't touch anything that I'm going to, I'm not going to touch anything that you touch. <laughs> He's over there going like this, wiping his hands on his pants and his shirt. And, and then I see him wiping his face and I'm going, oh my God scratching the back of his neck and I'm just going, Oh my God, I'd be dead if I did that. So I'm grateful, grateful that he is not allergic. Believe me. I'm not jealous. I'm grateful. I am not all unpacked. That's a very good question. I, I started getting unpacked and uh, as you may recall, my sister-in-law and brother, he dropped in for a shorter amount of time, but my sister-in-law came a couple of times and tried to help me get things kind of organized before it started warming up. In fact, she was here at the tail end of that big snow where I was snowed in for eight days. So now hopefully that we have the I say we, it's mine, it's my place, but Justin works for me and I, I basically have the four-wheeler for his disposal, but I'm my goal is, because this is the first time I've ever even been on one, uh, the video that you saw, is it today that I uploaded that? Yeah, so that's the first time I'd ever been on one and um, I hadn't been on a motorcycle since I was a teenager, so I didn't remember how the gears, you know, go down for this and up for that with your left foot. It's kind of brilliant if you think about it, but who would think about that? I don't know how they came up with that when they designed motorcycles. <laughs> how many people ride motorcycles here? Come on, let me know. Kristen is here from Pittsburgh. Thank you so much, Kristen. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Haffy has posted the dirt person. That's this t-shirt on the back. It's got late bloomer show. Uh, Haffy has already posted. Yes. The other t-shirt, which is the one with the big tomato that says late bloomer that you see at the end of my videos. Uh, that link is right up there. Bonfire.com is the company. Um, Doug and Stacy actually recommended me to Bonfire. They've had great luck, a great um, working relationship with uh, with Bonfire, with their T-shirts and some of their merchandise. So that's what I use. Deborah Lewis is here. <sighs> oh, you have no idea, Deborah. The the and and Jack is here. She can tell you right above you. In fact, uh, Epic Yard Farm. Um, Maybe maybe Jack started it all. I don't know. I think I think people were really into gardening even before you started, Jack. But she just uh, she connected through I think a Facebook group or something in the beginning, and then there are just so many ways for gardeners to connect in the Phoenix Valley. It's incredible. 
There's so many red pickup trucks that go down the road. <laughs> my pickup truck is technically not red. It's more, uh, well, my pickup truck is this color, cranberry. Mm. Thank you, Kylie Kai. 67 of you are here. Um, text a friend, have them join. Uh, the whole point of, ooh. Is there a bird up there? Right there? Oh, it's as soon as I hear it, it's gone. But I do have a hummingbird. Uh, my t-shirts do not come in white. I'm sorry to say. I could possibly, I don't even know if that's an option. You know, I always think of color. And so when I, you can select up to like four to six colors for each style. And I can't remember if uh, white was an option on any of them, but I did not pick white for any of them. Uh, because gardening, you know, everything gets so dirty. <laughs> and of course, sweat stains and all of that. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, Gail says she's still having problem finding jars for canning. Well, I got a bunch back in January so that I would be stocked up for whatever this is that's, you know, a lot of people are say are coming. The food shortage. I don't know what all is going to happen. But um, I need to get over my trepidation with selling canned goods because. I'm always so afraid that what if one jar that I canned didn't seal properly and then the contents inside went bad and they, somebody ate it and they got sick and then they and and then they blamed me and oh that that's I have a little bit of a oh, what's the word uh, well a trepidation about doing that but if I'm not able to actually sell the tomatoes let's Everybody's asking me, what are you going to do with all these, all the produce? Well, I think the only thing I might have an, an, a surplus with is tomatoes. Since I have, let's see, 59 plus 35 is 94. 59 plus 30, yeah, 94 plants. They won't, I don't think they'll all be good. But that's a lot of tomato plants for one person. <laughs> Um, Cherie, were you in the army? Is that what you mean? She said she's, she would be too nervous to ride a motorcycle again. Yes. I got to ride a motorcycle briefly last year, I think. And I was very nervous. <laughs> um, I guess it depends on who you're riding with, you know, uh, as to whether you're going to be nervous or not. Excuse me. Ah. Oh. This rainy, kind of chill, chilly weather makes my nose drip. Paranoia. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't thinking that extreme, Gail, but yes, I'm paranoid. Um, uh, I'll have plenty of time to do that while I'm waiting to see if I actually get too many tomatoes. I mean, I, that just it just sounds like a, a pipe dream, but maybe. Thank you, Patricia. Where are you writing from? Well, thank you for your service, Sherry. Am I saying that right? Because I know you spell it differently. Is it Sherry? Sherry? Is the emphasis on the first syllable? Sherry or Sherry? Second syllable. Uh-oh. Uh Get away. That seemed like the speed of a of a mosquito, but I've got my citronella essential oil. I'm a young living rep, and I and I read that the their insect repellent was really good. But I thought, you know what? I'm just going to buy the ingredients that they put in theirs, 
and make my own spray. Uh, yes, I do, Marianne, and I had uh, planned on spending a lot of time with family, and then things change. You know, things are very different in the world than we could have ever imagined, right? Um, in, in the, whoa, that was a Hummer. Went by me about 80 miles an hour. <laughs> uh uh, snow of a gun. Uh, well, we were talking about Phoenix a second ago, but now we're talking about um, whether or not I have friends or family in Tennessee. And I have a brother and his two daughters and their families and his wife and my mother in the Nashville area. And I have my sister and her, most of her family uh, west of Nashville, about an hour. And then I have uh, another brother in uh, four hours east of me, just over over into Virginia. And a nephew and a niece in Kingsport, Tennessee, and um, all kinds of friends. Because I went to college at UT in uh, in Tennessee, University of Tennessee. So uh, to a couple of different uh, branches of the university, the main one and then another one. And so I was in a sorority and I'm, I'm still connected with some of my sorority uh, friends. And uh, yeah, so I have uh, several friends. Let's see, what have you posted Mar Martin G? <laughs> mosquitoes and what what is that what is that gun that you've got pointed at the mosquitoes Cherie perfect thank you oh fantastic Patricia thank you so much Patricia's in Alabama just found uh, I'm assuming that you're watching OAG in Alabama right Patricia I should do that, Connie. I really should. And um, I shall. 85 of you are watching. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hold it down. Scroll down and hit all. Otherwise, you may not be notified. YouTube does not notify you just because you're subscribed to a channel. You have to actually go the extra step and let them know, hey, I really do want to see their video, so let me know. So uh, you have to go that extra mile and hit that bell and scroll down and hit all. So I hope you'll subscribe. I've got a lot of great things coming up. I just want for all of my regular fans who are obviously here. Uh, I just want to remind you if I, if I haven't reminded you already that video that I uploaded. Uh, was it today? Yeah, today with the. Um, well, we <laughs> we named, I named, and he accepted the uh, the suggestion. I named the four wheeler Bob. I don't know why. It just it just it just felt right. And so now we can say rather than go get the four wheeler, we can just say go get Bob. <laughs> so uh, we named the four wheeler. I named the four wheeler Bob. And we got uh, the the video that I <laughs> that I uploaded uh, today. Getting Bob. That was the day we got Bob. Was actually the let's see eleven Tuesday eleven Wednesday twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen. That was the Saturday after the incident that happened, the tragedy that happened here. Many people have left me so many amazing comments and I am so grateful. Um, many people feel like it was a blessing that this happened here and not on the highway or something where he could have, this could have happened to him and he might have um, hit someone else. Uh, anyway, we're talking about a lot of different things. Snow of a gun. <laughs> You should you should actually remind everybody what your name is. 
Wait, wait, it's, it's, wait, I know what your name is. It's Jeremy, right? <laughs> because I always, I always think, okay, Jeremy, because of Jack's Jeremy. Yes, Steve. I do. Ah. Uh. <laughs> but that's two syllables, Daryl. I'm trying to keep things simple. Daryl thinks I should name the four wheeler Harvey. Yes, I know. I remembered. Uh, let's see. Come, uh, Country Homestead Preacher is here. Adrian, Aiden is, is here. Uh, Aiden, uh, remind us where you are. Well, uh, gardeners are in good shape if they can get what they need. I mean, wood, if you're trying to build something out of wood and, and we need to build something, wood is a fortune. Well, everything is going up, not just food. Where is Quito Homestead? Oh, there. Quito Homestead is here. Quito Homestead with Jess. Fantastic. Now, are you, does this mean you're doing the keto diet? Or your, your whole homestead is like keto diet? Is that why it's called that? And Country Homestead Preacher, can you, um, can you tell me your name again? Mm, does anybody speak Spanish? Um, I know, let's see, hola is hello. Good evening, I think. Um, my name is Lucy. I'm from Brazil. Um, Gusto mucho. I have a feeling I love your videos. Um, something, something about planting um, garden videos or something. Uh, and I used to know what mascara means and I forgot who speaks Spanish. Anybody? Anyway, welcome Lucia. Hola. Oh, thank you so much. Keto. Ah, Yes, I, I am so concerned about, well, Scott, I, I will, if these uh, are mosquito zappers really work, I'll be definitely sharing, sharing the name. Keto Homestead is in Ohio. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, I wish I could just focus on med medicinal herbs. Uh, you said medical, but I, I know you mean medicinal. You probably are dictating and phones just never, <laughs> never get it right from what you say. Uh, I'm convinced that, you know, I don't know where these, this software is made that, you know, we speak into it, voice recognition. Anyway, got to go making dinner for the family. Okay. Uh, she, she left, Robert, uh, Rebecca left. So, uh, oh my goodness. Well, if you recall, I don't know if Gail, if you went back and watched my videos, but in my, you know, I used to do a lot of tours and I would, I would just leave in the summer. I would get my garden all ready and then I would just leave it and, and, and hope that it would get watered. Um, but in, in 16, I believe it was 16, I went, yeah, in 16, I went up and met Angie and Ashland, and I did that whole tour. I started in, um, well, I started in Nashville. In fact, Cherie, Cherie uh, was watching an old video of mine, and she said something about a concert, and I thought, what on earth is she talking about? I had to go back back and watch the video that I had made. I've made seven or eight, well, eight, probably 800 videos now. And it's like, I don't remember what's in all those videos. Uh, I know they're all, they're all clean, good, clean fun. And, and they're, um, 
family friendly. But anyway, this particular one was when I when I first started vlogging in 16, this is when YouTube said, oh, no, we want lots of videos so they can advertise on them. We want lots of videos. We want you making lots of videos. Uh, throw them together and get them up, make them long so we can put lots of ads in. And so at that point, I started making vlogs on my phone. So I would shoot and people may still do this. I don't know, but I don't. Uh, I would shoot everything on my phone. And then I had a little it was a brand new software from uh, ad uh, from Adobe called Clip. And I was actually fortunate to meet uh, a couple of gals from Adobe up at the Vancouver Web Fest, which is where in 2017, yeah, in 2017, uh, Late Bloomer won for best reality series at Vancouver Web Fest, which was the premiere, the first web festival in Canada. And there weren't very many in the U.S. I mean, one year there were none. The next year there were like 30. And then the next year there were like 200. Now, is that a mosquito or? Yes. Oh. Oh. So anyway, uh, I went up there and for the third time and I won my web show one. But that was before I started the vlogging and all of that. I had an editor, sound editor, and all of that. So if you watch my old videos from the first five years, you'll see that I did 20 a year. They were all short because I had an editor, and she worked according to time. And so I wouldn't be sending her a video that would wind up to be 18 minutes long. That would cost a fortune. Anyway, when all of the, when YouTube changed their their algorithm and their analytics and and they said we want more videos, I had to start doing everything myself. I swore I would never edit, never wanted to edit. <laughs> but I started doing it on my phone and and this app made it so easy, you know, um, to put in titles and and all of that and and so I watched this video and it was quite good considering it was shot on my phone. Let's see. Oh, hold on. I've got to check this story. I was in a play with this darling young girl. Oh, maybe not. Okay, she's expecting a child this week. <laughs> her first, so I want to keep track of that. Anyway, her name is Siggy, and we we wish her well. She was darling to work with. I did a play in 2018 in Sierra Madre, which is um, east of Los Angeles by about 45 minutes or so. And it was a great experience, a great director, a wonderful play and um, called The Immigrant. Very timely at the time, 2018, to be talking about immigration. And, um, and this is a, based on a true story. Uh, the Jewish immigrant that came into um, through, um, is it Brownsville, Texas? Well, came through Galveston and uh, back in 1909 or something like that. Yeah. Okay. The mosquitoes are flying around me, Scott. It was a great experience. And she was in the play and played the young uh, Jewish girl. Let's see. Where are they? Where are the mosquitoes hatching? You know, I don't know where they are. I mean, I have a bird bath down here, but it gets changed frequently. The water's always moving because it's always raining. So where are they hatching? I know they can hatch in a tablespoon of water, but really. Let's see. I think I'm behind. Let's see. Let's see, is somebody asking about my um, editing thing, John Haffey? If, if you are asking what I use now, I use Premiere Pro. Adobe products are rental only, like, you know, they, they, they did all of that years ago where you couldn't buy the software anymore. You have to rent it. I'm sure they make a lot more money that way. I'm trying to kill it, Martin, but I can't catch it. Uh, 
Yes, Kylie, I did. They came to the Adobe girls came to my hotel room in Vancouver and showed me how to use this software. And we made the first video in an hour and I'm going, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. But the software was limited and it turned out that they only had about three or four pieces of music that were even, you could even use for a garden video. It's th that piece of software, that clip software was more for the young people who are just going down to the beach and they just want to put a, a collage of images together and put it with some, you know, exercise music and make it exciting or moving or to the beat or whatever. And that's not what the garden videos are. So as they got longer and as I was doing these tours, you would put in, you would drop in this music, which would play on a loop. You couldn't stop it and start it. And it would play on a loop and it would play for the entire 15 minutes. And you would be, I would be so sick of that piece of music by the end of it. I said, I can't, I can't use this, this software anymore. Now, meanwhile, they made another software that I never learned how to use that would probably be more to what I need because Premiere Pro or, or what anybody else needs doing this stuff because Premiere Pro is very, very deep piece of software. I mean, you know, very real professional editors making movies and everything use it. So um, it can do so much. I don't even scratch like a fingernails worth of uh, ability out of that, out of that software to do my videos. You know, I just use the very, very basic stuff because my goal is not to be a great editor. <laughs> my goal is just to get my message out. You know, I want to inspire people to grow their own food, to, uh, to care about the earth and um, protect it and uh, and be concerned with food security. Because if you're growing your own food, you have a much greater chance of surviving if there are food shortages. So that's what I'm trying to encourage everybody to do. Ah, so that was your question, Scott. Yes. Uh, but they do have... Um, let me see if I can pull it up. I did see it the other day. And uh, what's it called? It's called, um, hmm, that's funny. I know I saw it the other day. Uh, ah, it, it's, it's called Premier Rush. Create and share online videos anywhere. And I don't know. I don't know how much it, how much they cost, how much it costs. Let's see if I can find out. Um, but it looked at the time, this was in 2017. It doesn't say how much it is. Hmm. I don't know. Um, it's a much simpler program than Premier Pro, so I would think it would be less money. Premier Pro costs nineteen ninety nine a month, so you know not, not everybody wants to spend that much money. And then on top of that, you got to pay for your music, so that's another fifteen. So you're paying thirty five dollars a month just right out the door without even doing anything. Um, for your videos. So it, it, it all costs money. I mean, you could probably get free music, but it would be a lot of searching. And, you know, when you're trying to make three, four videos a week or more, you've got to have the music at your fingertips. You've got to go to your source and just type in what, you know, the mood or the genre you're looking for and have 10 options pop up. And just grab something, and that's that's really the way I do it. I've been I've done it so much now that I, I can I can I can look at the, um, what you, what do you call it, the, uh, I just blanked. Any well, Scott, you're a musician. You know what I'm talking about. What was that? A moth. Uh, I can look at the. What is it called? <laughs> Help me, Scott. Uh, uh, well, she was, didn't she say was she was from Brazil? That's, uh, that's, um, that's not Spanish. That's, um, Portuguese. 
Um, mm, I keep forgetting that that straw is in there. I don't even see it. Mm. You're right about that, Toby. Uh, Gina, good question. Uh, <laughs> true, Daryl. Very true. Daryl says when I get my bug zappers, we won't be able to hear that you won't be able to hear me for all the buzz, all the. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Oh, Claudia is a big fan of yours, Scott. Did you see that? Did anybody ever figure out what, what they were saying? Oh, Kathleen is here. Hi, Kathleen. Coco is here. Yes, Scott is a great teacher on his videos. Oh, are you, Kylie, are you talking about in Northern Germany? That was Ranka. She had all the medicinal herbs that she grew. I have lost touch. Oh. Oh, good. I just heard from Justin. He went and got his, um, a massage. Well, it's more than a massage. She's a, what do you call it? Phys no, not a physical therapist. Uh, She's more than a massage. She's a, mas well, I don't know if she's a massage therapist or what, but anyway, he's, he's got some back issues and you should have seen, you will see him today. He put the muscles into, there was this big satellite dish circa 1980s. I'm sure it was eight feet. The dish was eight feet across like a black wire kind of, uh, net of what do you call that black wire mesh kind of with with uh welded soldered uh metal rim and spokes and then a big dish in the a big uh microphone thingy in the middle and the other the, we didn't see this you didn't see this in the video because i didn't see it happen but when he plowed through this side over here, he hit that with the forest mulcher. And there were some plastic parts and plastic just went like that. And he sort of ripped off the side of the, uh, the metal dish. And because um, he didn't know it was there, it was inside the tree. And what happened is they put that satellite dish up decades ago and cedar trees just grow up like weeds around here. So the cedar tree had grown up and grown through it. So the branches were actually going through that mesh and, and they were full branches on the outside. So you, you couldn't even really see it. And so he took the tree down, the forest mulcher took the tree down in front of it. So now we're looking at this ugly mangled old satellite dish. And I'm just going, Justin, it'd be so great if you could get that out of there. And it required, the whole thing was sitting on a metal, there's a metal pipe. <laughs> there's a metal pipe that goes into concrete in the ground that's about six feet tall. On top of that is a, a metal coupling that's slightly larger that sits down and screws into it. And then you got this big, massive, eight foot wide satellite dish that's, that's got an armature that holds it and everything, all metal. And he was trying to lift this like that up and off of that thing because he managed to get these bolts, which were rusted together. He managed, I had some WD-40 and he managed to get those out. And then he was trying to do this and he kept trying to step on something higher to get him more leverage, uh, more pushing power. And he, well, I won't tell you what happened, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, the camera was rolling and rolling and rolling and nothing was happening. He could not get it like the last inch and a half off of this thing. 
And so I, I turned the camera off and I walked over because I just wanted to see what he, I couldn't really see, you know, what the problem was. So I was looking at the, looking around, looking at the, watching him do it. And then all of a sudden he like pushes it off. So the camera missed it. And I like, you know, like I escaped with my life. It went that way and I managed to go that way. So yeah, you gotta be careful. <laughs> 10 yards is not going to go 97 cents. That's a good price. Actually. I think I, at Hobby Lobby, I think I spent $1. I I'm thinking it was 149 a yard, but it was 72 inches wide. Is yours 72 inches wide? And is it the heavier one? I hope. Gina's talking about the red boil that I use to cover the brassicas. Now, you're not going to want to use that red boil over your beds for anything that needs pollination from bees, obviously. What it, it's designed to do is keep out the cabbage moth and all those moths that lay eggs on your brassicas, which, guess what? They're bolting. I'll have to do a video on that. Ah, uh, let's see. Boy, I got behind. In terms of the screened-in porch, I don't know. I I had him looking at it the other day, and he's going, it's going to be tough just the way all of this wood is built. I mean, where do you put the netting? If you put it on the outside of the railing, then it's outside the house. I mean, it's outside the porch. It would be tough to screen this in. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but I don't think it would look that great. A mosquito punk. I've never heard of that. I'm going to have to write that down. You know, and that reminds me, I used to have, and I may still have some mosquito dunks. I think they're called dunks. Are we talking about the same thing? You put them in uh, any standing water. Um, I get them on Amazon, but um, I'll write that down in case it's actually something different. Uh, but you can put a mosquito, that's true. You can put a dunk in, in the, uh, bird bath and it doesn't affect the birds. It's a natural substance. Uh, but I've never heard of anything you, you lighting them and, uh, like incense, but I, ha I have a bunch of things like that. Let's see. Oh gosh, it jumped. We're talking about corn. I saw Felice in there. Uh, 109 are watching. I just want to welcome anyone that's just joined the live stream. And if you're new to my channel, I am now trying to develop a large property in Tennessee, large meaning nine acres. Whereas I had my entire property in California was 500 square feet larger than my silage tarp down there. That included the house, the garage and the art studio and, and the garden. <laughs> so this is all new to me. The weather, the poison ivy, the ticks, the chiggers haven't really even Mosquitoes, mosquitoes are not new to me, but I mean, it's, everything is ch more challenging here. What is the secret of corn? Toby is asking. Um, if you are an improvisational guitarist, I saw a couple of videos. This is, this is off garden subject just for a moment. I saw something, I mean, they're always coming up with new instruments that you've never seen, but I saw a harp guitar 
it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. One kind of the coolest thing I ever saw. And I saw a couple of people playing in different, two different videos, this harp guitar. And it's like a guitar that has this section that comes over with these harp strings on it. And wow, it's so cool. You might want to check that out, Toby. Just at least watch the videos. Yeah, I heard Peaches and isn't Peaches and Cream a Monsanto project, uh, uh, a Monsanto, um, because I heard it was Roundup Ready. And I could be wrong about that, but I think that's what I was told. Anyway, Felice is here from Los Angeles. Hello. Anyway, Kylie, if you're talking about Ranka, I have not heard from Ranka in two years. I'm very concerned. She had a thriving Instagram um, that she set up when I was there. In fact, I encouraged her to call it the Healing Berry Garden. And she did. And she was so into berries and, and all, of the, all of the things that grow really well in the north of Germany. And she closed the Instagram and I haven't heard from her. So did you see that? I don't know if you saw that hummingbird. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> That's right. That's where I've heard mascara. <laughs> I heard that from Denora. That's right. That's right. Well, fortunately in Tennessee, we're not doing that. Oh, let's see. Um, mm. I think this might be honey select. Hold on. Yep. Honey select. Honey select corn. This is dipped or something. Uh, it's a hybrid and it's treated. Germination, 85%. Made by Southern States Seed. And it's, it's treated for bugs, but it's not genetically modified is what I, is my understanding. You can see it's treated because it's pink. That's Honey Select. So I have enough for a small patch here. I just, I'm always thinking, oh, let me put two kernels of corn in every hole. I just want to make sure they come up. But if you do that, then you have to thin. You cannot, trust me, you cannot leave them both and think, oh, I'll have extra corn. No, no. First of all, corn needs a lot of support. These roots go down. They have to, you have to kind of, um, Till it up. I mean, uh, not till it up. Um, mound it up. Mound up the roots. They need a lot of support because they grow fast and they grow tall, and they need a lot of compost or a lot of uh, organic matter. And I really want to grow corn. Daryl gave me this corn yesterday. Daryl, what is the name of this? You told me, but I forgot. Ah. Uh. Okay, so he says I need to know my corn intimately. <laughs> well, what is the name of it? Let's start there. Oh, good. Um, you're going to be up north, Toby. So, um, I mean, I'm sure you can grow corn, but you have to, you're going to have to look for varieties that do well in a shorter season, I would think. Okay, bye, Martin. Everybody give a thumbs up. If you are on mobile, uh, you can click off of the live chat for a moment, hit the thumbs up sign, and uh, we just got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to get off at six. And... Um, a giant bird bath. What is that the end of a sentence? <laughs> Let's see. Where are we going? Mm. Oh.
Oh, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. I appreciate that. Yes, Toby, isn't that amazing? That was just fantastic. Wait, what are you talking about, Cherie? That said heart failure and it happens fast. Seventy ticks in three days. Oh my God, you must be looking at your body like all day long. Oh, a grape arbor. I was just wanting to get rid of that metal. Well, it's mangled on one side. If it wasn't mangled, I think we could make something out of it. Hmm. You know, because he ran into the side of it. So it's just like it's all gnarly and like ripped. I don't know. I was just going to try to get it to the metal guy and get it out of here. Thank you, Happy. Yes, we are trying to get me to 60,000 subscribers. I should have been there a year ago, but whatever. Uh, uh, let's see. Somebody mentioned nine o'clocks last week and that they were yellow, but I don't remember anything else. Adios, Martin, if you're already gone. But uh, Daryl, what was the name of the of the corn that you gave me? Thank you, Steve. <laughs> ah. <gasps> Oh my goodness. Oh, let's not talk about the snakes, Kylie. Got enough to think about. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> oh my goodness otters how, how incredible yes well what is the name of it daryl dent and flint corns i don't even know what that uh, that is scott i'm so honored that scott is is here with us scott head has a fantastic channel uh, called Black Gumbo. It's, it's actually under his name and Black Gumbo. You can search either one and find it. Very, very informative educational channel. On um, he's he do he's doing backyard gardening. I used to do front yard gardening basically. And oh, guess what I picked up, <laughs> Scott? I I picked up a passion fruit vine. Can you believe it? And it's the same one. It's um, what, what's it called? Uh, El um, Eldis. Uh, Passiflora eldis or something like that. It's the same one that I had in California. Um, but I think, you know, I, I, I think I'm just going to have to put it in a pot and kind of do some kind of armature for it to grow around and then put it in the, either in a greenhouse, I don't have a greenhouse yet, but uh, put it inside the sunroom if, you know, when it gets, starts getting cold. The problem with uh, the uh, the corns that uh, you grind into that you grind for meal, it they have a much longer growing se uh, season, so it's too late for me to start anything like that, Scott. I I have to grow a short season uh, corn. What is this? Uh, did you say this was sixty five days? Sweet luck, yellow sweet corn. I love it. Del Allen is here from Northeast. Actually, it's 6.02. Time for us to get off. Um, yes, you have to hill the corn. I couldn't think of the name, Jennifer.
okay back up to 6 52 p.m i don't know what you're you're telling me there but anyway listen everybody 102 i'm honored that you spent this time with me today i didn't have a lot of things i wanted to talk about uh but as usual, my community gets going between each other. Um, Jack is left for, uh, oh, good. Oh, good, uh, good, good. Uh, so Jack is sending me some uh, EE Toy onions and uh, midnight in England. Good night, uh, Nana, Silvertongue, Daywalker. Let's see. Check out Hauser. He's a he's a cello player. She's telling me to check that out. I don't have a TV. I, I haven't missed it at all. I haven't watched television. I haven't watched a television in over uh, at least two years. <laughs> I'll have to get a corn cob pi pipe, Toby. Uh, I, I'm very excited for you with your big uh, property up there. And I want to just wish everybody um, good health and uh, stay safe. And Judy is here, but Judy, I'm getting off. You'll have to watch uh, re the replay. Thank you so much for tuning in, Allison. Ah, fantastic. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely, Scott. Couldn't agree more. So, and, and you can learn so much for free, you know, I mean, all you have to do is, I, I feel like if you, if you watch a channel and you get something from it, either inspiration or you learn something, give it a thumbs up. I mean, those, the, all those channel uh, creators are content creators are creating that content, taking their time to do that. So give a thumbs up, maybe let the ads play a little bit. That's how they, we make our money. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, don't forget there are only, where they go? Where'd it go? Oh, right in front of me. There are only four of these left. One says homestead and the other says gardener. And uh, I'd love to get those sold and move on. So thank you so much for your support and God bless you and have a great week. Go Tennessee is right. Thank you, Deborah. Oh, that's a good idea, Jamela. Gardening has been your passion since. <gasps> I, I do have some tomatoes coming on and my tomatoes haven't even been planted in the ground. But anyway, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget, I am two weeks behind on editing. So anything you see tomorrow, the next day, it was all shot like almost two weeks ago. So I'll see you in the next video and I'll see you Sunday on the live stream. Take care. Shelly is here from McMinnville. Good night. Please watch the replay.